My PS4 controller developed stick drift and dead zones. Testing the controller shows the dead zones and that I am unable to move the cursor into any of the corners. Also, when I am not touching the thumbsticks, they wobble and drift. Most games are not playable with this controller. In this video, I am going to replace the analog joysticks with new ones that I purchased from eBay. I purchased a set of six here for less than six bucks. You can purchase an even higher quantity for a better price, but I only needed to repair two controllers. To get started, I need to flip over the controller and remove the four screws. Then I use a cancelled credit card to pry open the controller. If you have a pry tool, that would probably work better, but an old credit card works just as well for me. I first pull apart the controller like this, and then I slide the credit card in. And I'll hear a little snap. Inside there are two tabs. Don't worry if they break. I was able to pry this controller open without breaking them, but if they break, the screws will still hold the controller together. Next, I will detach the ribbon cable by pulling on the blue tab. I am being very careful not to tear this cable or connector. Disconnect the battery. It's glued in place, so I am lifting with a little force. There is one screw on the inside that fastens the battery holder. Then I can remove the battery holder. I remove one more ribbon cable by pulling on the blue tab, and the top part of the shell easily separates. Now I am going to remove the two wires from the feedback motors using the soldering iron. This makes working with the board much easier, as I can completely remove the board. Pull out the thumbsticks and set them aside. Now I have the board ready to work on. First, I will remove the old potentiometers by using a thin screwdriver or a razor blade. By twisting it back and forth, I am breaking the worn out potentiometer from the board. I repeat this for the second one on the thumbstick. With both potentiometers removed now, I need to remove the pins that attach them to the board. I added some fresh solder to the bottom of the board, and this will make it much easier to heat up the old solder. I also added a little bit of flux. With the fresh solder added, I will now take the soldering iron and apply a little force to the pin and push it down through the board. I do this for all six pins. I don't have to worry if my hands shake a little bit because there are no other components close by that I could accidentally damage. Now take a small pair of pliers or tweezers and hold onto the pin from the top side of the board while applying heat to the bottom of the board, and the pin falls right out. I clean the soldering iron with a little steel wool. With all of the pins removed, I will use some braided solder wick and clean up the surface. 
I have tons of room to work with here and can move the wick back and forth. I don't apply any force as I do not want to damage the board. This particular pin is the ground pin and it is giving me a little trouble. So I'll add a little bit more solder. And that seems to do the trick. Continue with the solder wick until all of the vias are clean. Using some isopropyl alcohol and a Q-tip, I can remove the old flux and clean up the board, and inspect the board to make sure all the vias are clean. I have the new thumbsticks and I am carefully removing the new potentiometers with a small knife. Comparing the original ones to the new ones, I can see the difference. The old ones are the orange ones on top of this video and they look completely worn out. Now I take a new potentiometer and push it into place. It takes some wiggling, but eventually it will go into place. A quick test shows that everything moves freely. Do the same for the second one. Now I apply some flux to the bottom of the board and solder them into place. I do use a generous amount of solder as these connect to moving parts that may take some abuse over time. Slide the board back into the controller and reattach the motor wires, making sure to match the original position of the black and red wires. Again, I clean the board with some isopropyl alcohol to remove any flux. And the board snaps into place. Flip over the controller and reinstall the thumbsticks. Attach the top of the controller and feed the ribbon cable through. I'm using a pair of tweezers to help. Now attach the ribbon cable, and next is the battery. Now attach the last ribbon cable and the controller turned on, which is a good sign that I have everything hooked up correctly. Finally, put in the last four screws into the bottom of the controller. Now that I've repaired my PS4 controller, what I wanna do is play some games and test it out. I have Soul Calibur 6 and I wanna get started playing.
fan the flames of the warrior's fighting spirits. Okay, time for some sparring. Is that any way to treat a lady? Battle one, fight! <laughs> the control is so much better now playing this game. I feel like I have so much more movement. I'm able to watch the jump in there, trying it out. Well, there you have it, folks. I have successfully fixed my PS4 controller. I hope you found this video useful and that you're able to fix your PS4 controllers if you're having similar issues. If you do like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel as I do upload content like this for various other different consoles uh, and video games. Thanks.